Rubber Pros & More, we have the largest selection of rubber and turf products in the USA. We offer professional installation and most of our products are in stock and ready to ship. Our high rated rubber flooring is designed to take a beating and is manufactured here in the USA. All of our rubber products are made for commercial grade applications from our 8mm rubber flooring to our high impact performance flooring. We also carry a wide selection of sports and utility terms. In addition, we can add hash markings, custom colors, and logos. Visit our website at rubberforsandmore.com for more details. I'm at uh, Dale LaSalle High School and uh, founder of the Catholic National Athletic Association. It's great to see so many faces here from around the country um, in another segment um, of the virtual retreat, one of the first that we've tried and hopefully uh, first of many. Uh, we are very, very uh, blessed to have a Catholic school legend. I keep using the word legend um, because mm -hmm. a lot of folks that get to uh, 40 years of service. Uh, I don't want to age Coach Smith, um, but I've gotten to know him uh, well the last few years, despite the fact that they continue to kick everyone's butt in football. Um, I still love him for who he is and what he's done. Um, obviously, he's been a teacher, an assistant coach in multiple sports from, from track and field uh, and wrestling. Obviously, we know him as a football powerhouse coach, and um, it goes without saying, if you Google him, He's got a long list of accomplishments. I can only imagine how many college pro players he sent uh, from under his tenure, the championships he's done. In addition, he took the time to be athletic director. Um, so in these, uh, in these four decades, we have someone in our presence right now that would, I hope that, you know, the hopes is we can learn from his story uh, and, and hear some different points of why he's still there. I think uh, I speak for someone who's been at the same place for 20 years. I wonder if I'm going to make it. And I always wonder why and the how, and it's always good to hear someone tell us what, what, is, what does it take to be at a Catholic school for this many years, for this long, what's motivated them. Um, we're lucky to have one of our partners, Sean Connors uh, of the CNA for the last few years of 18 sponsor. Um, if you don't know about their, their company is an online fundraising company that uh, they've been associated with the CNA for since the inception. Uh, Sean, Loves doing interviews because if you check out their social media and their, their podcast and their uh, Twitter account, he's interviewed many people from different levels, the different areas, public and private. Um, and I asked Sean if he'd be, uh, be willing to, to, to handle the interview process with Coach Smith. Um, basically, the format is Sean's going to speak to Coach Smith for about 15 minutes or so. Uh, and, and then if you have a question, feel free to type it in the chat because we're going to Coach Smith would love to answer any questions he can at the end of this. Uh, for about five or 10 minutes. So about 40, 40 minutes or so, roughly. Um, again, like to thank Rubber Floors and more. Um, as you know, to make these things happen, we have to have people to support us. Uh, they were gracious enough to, to be the presenting partner for, for Coach Smith, Put Your Players First segment. So at this point in time, I'd like to hand it over to uh, Sean. Thanks again and, and enjoy. Awesome. Leo, can you hear me okay? I got gotcha. you. Yeah. We got yeah, Okay, great. Awesome. I can hear you. I can hear you. There he is. What's up, coach? Awesome. Fired up, man. Uh, Leo, thank you very much for having uh, us on here today. Again, I'm Sean Connors, uh, co-founder and CEO with E-Team Sponsor. Uh, just quick background on who we are, and then we'll jump right in with Coach Smith, because I know that's why you're all here today. Um, uh, we're, we've been around since 2010. We're a, like Leo said, we're a crowdfunding platform. We help high schools and colleges raise money for athletics and advancement. So uh, speaking to all of you that are in an athletic director position, uh, many of you are managing, leading, uh, you know, your athletic administration, uh, and you're also having to work with the other side of your campus. That's what we do. We bring athletics and advancement together. We help you raise money. We've raised over $88 million across the country. We're in all 50 states. We've worked with 4,900 schools across the country. Uh, we've worked with George Smith at St. Thomas Aquinas. We've worked with Leo at De La Salle. Uh, we have a background in working with the athletics and advancement side of things at uh, uh, Catholic high school. So uh, for those of you that don't follow us, uh, pop on Twitter, pop on YouTube, uh, follow our, e our E-Team sponsor channel. Uh, you can follow us on, on Twitter. 
Uh, we do a Leading to Win podcast. We have a number of podcasts where we're looking at what we can do to help all of you that are looking at uh, you know professionally developing your careers, uh, hearing from people that have made an impact, uh, meaningful impact with their roles. And uh, so that's, as, me, as Leo had mentioned earlier, that's something that we're really proud that we're able to bring to people. Uh, as we say, we're more than a fundraiser. So uh, today that leads us to uh, the opportunity to interview uh, George Smith. Uh, I've, for those of you that do not know uh, Coach Smith's background, uh, originally from uh, the great state of Indiana, he's a Purdue Boilermaker. Uh, he's been down, he's smart, got out, of the, uh, got out of the rest belt in the cold and went down to Florida uh, and uh, had a great career down there in, at St. Thomas Aquinas, 34 years, won 366 games. Uh, he's won six national championships in, the state of high, in, in high school football in the state of Florida. Now serves as athletic director at St. Thomas Aquinas. So uh, Coach Smith, thanks for coming on with us this morning. Well, Sean, thank you. And Leo, thank you for ask, asking to do this. And for you guys who are listening, uh, we dealt with Sean uh, last year, Sean, correct? Yes, that was right. Last fall, Coach. Right. And this was uh, during the, the, well, what's going on right now with the, the virus. And we were very successful. I was very, very happy how he trust or trust and took care of our, our, our people on this. And Sean, I've been around a long time, as Leo said, it's my 49th year at St. Thomas. And, you know, we go through with all these fundraisers, these people are going to help you and they don't do anything. And Sean, I, I just have to thank you and we're ready to go when, when they get uh, next year, when we get going and, Get this virus the hell out of here and let's go. Yeah, I love it. Love it. Thank you for that, Coach. Yeah, we're, we're happy to help. And uh, for those of you that want to learn more, we'll certainly uh, look forward to connecting with you guys afterwards. Well, Coach, let's talk a little bit about just um, everyone here. They're all here for one reason, right? They're here for professional development. They want to hear what other uh, leaders are doing uh, at the Catholic, you know, Catholic high school level. Um, let's talk just a little bit about leadership. Leadership is something I'm sure that's a part of uh, everyone's, um, uh, you know, athletic administration, their core values. Let's talk a little bit about what leadership means to you. Maybe who are some of the leaders that have influenced you in your life? And how are you choosing to lead now with all the challenges that we have down there at St. Thomas Aquinas? Well, the, <clears throat> I graduated high school in 1966. So all these things, the young guys are listening right now. Uh, I was a a really fan of Bo Schembechler and Woody and they were totally different characters and then Coach Shula and I just wanted to get to people that I thought uh, were doing one thing and that was for the players you know in, in the uh, uh, college but in high school our players and I think now after all these years and you guys, the young guys are saying the same thing that we're seeing that I believe that our young players want to be do things. And those two things, they want to be loved because it's tough in the world out there with some families and unemployment, but they want to be loved, but they want to be disciplined. And I, a lot of people are missing that boat because they do want to be disciplined and the respect for the coaching staff and their mentors, if they're telling them this is great or don't do this, they relish that. And uh, I think that's a, a, a great uh, situation that we're doing there. They need that. And especially with just think what we've gone through in <clears throat> some, uh, probably in February, we have the virus comes in, we have an election that is all the rails. And let's go in, uh, like in California, the fires and just down here in the last two days of floods and the snowstorms, all of those things are happening at the same time. But what are those kids? They need us to direct them and to love them. 
So, and I'm sure that these young guys out there listening or however they are, I hope, and I believe this, 100% of these people are listening to what I'm saying. They're doing that right now. And that's why they are successful. And that's why kids love them. Because you guys are becoming, day after day, the parents. That's great, Coach. I love that. Lead with love. That's a good, uh, it's a great, great way to, to look at that. Coach, talking about, um, you know, we've got uh, uh, leadership at the athletic department level. You have to, you know, you're administering not just the, the, the student athlete side of things, but you're also having to manage relationships with coaches. You're having to manage relationships across, um, you know, the, the rest of the administration. So outside of athletics, talking principal, president, whatever your model may be. What would you recommend? Um, what are maybe the top things that you've learned in terms of relationship building with your coaches? but also developing and maintaining relationship with the other side of your campus. What are some things that in your, you know, in your 40 plus years that you've learned to lean on? Well, I'm on, on the, the, the only issue that I wish was better and I'll bet the people that I'm talking to right now, get more coaches in the building. I mean, our, our freaking, we have 21, Hundred kids, we have all these programs that were not even, you know, re recognized programs, but club sports like rowing and rugby and those things. We need people in the building to help and be around, and we just don't have that. And I think that a lot of uh, Catholic high schools do what they ever can. I think a lot of times that we, our administration or whatever, our body of government say, okay, well, coaches can't teach. What are they going to do? Just go do cafeteria duty? Or are they going to check kids in with the COVID in the morning? What are they going to, we under, we have to understand that the coaches, male and female coaches, have a whole different more than just teaching in the classroom. They're not leaving at 2.30 or 3.30 or whatever. They're hours and hours. So those are the things that really is hard for me to, especially what we're going through right now is, uh, uh, the COVID world, um, you know, do we are on a hybrid situation. Once again, we're about 2,100, I think. So if you divide that, you're about 350 or 400 kids every day. But that's not true because they can stay virtual. So we have 130 kids physical or one day it might be uh, whatever, 150, 160. And we have to have people after school to check these kids in. I'm not even talking about teaching. It's about get our players where they can actually be safe. And we had a big deal and I think it really worked. Uh, when all this stuff ever got pushed back in Florida, and when I talked uh, uh, with, with Leo, when he said that California was going to push back, and I really thought that that was a hell of a deal. But we have, unfortunately, in Florida, we hadn't did that. And uh, the state, uh, well, the FHSA is north, was very not populated like Palm Beach or uh, Fort Lauderdale or Miami and uh, so we're getting uh, the a positive situation at 10 percent eight percent and you got up in uh, uh, Jacksonville and the, the smaller uh, places in the north their position was like two percent or one percent and so the FHS has just pushed it forward we're going to start so here we are we play four games 
the public schools uh, in uh, Palm Beach and, and Miami and uh, Fort Lauderdale, they've only played one. They are not even the playoffs. So I'm not saying that the political thing because the government was this guy or that from the governor's situation. I'm just saying that we need, it, which is very, very right in front of me, we need coaches in the beer, in the building. Got it. Coach, is there, a, is there anything that you can think back to in terms of maybe it was the most important lesson learned with dealing with your administration? I want to kind of focus on that again. I think a challenge that we hear often from athletic directors in your seat, and, and for those of you that are on the call today, talk about what, what the, the dynamics, the challenge between, you know, we'll call it a on-campus tug of war between, you know, the <laughs> mission of the school and then the the athletic department. Obviously, you've built a, a heck of an athletic department there at St. Thomas Aquinas. I'm sure everyone on the call here today is striving to do the same, and they're, uh, at, at, you know, on their their campus. What have you learned? Maybe that that number one lesson in in navigating the other side of the campus from the administration side of things that you could share with people today. Well, Sean, I think this. I I go back, obviously, but uh, I I think that. Everybody on this call will know that, and then there's nothing wrong with this. It's not. I mean, everybody have, if everybody's found, you know, found out that they love the national uh, Spanish uh, uh, honor society or the band, nothing wrong with that. And maybe they don't give a, a, a crap about sports and that's okay. But if you don't, have an athletic department that is out there after Cal, you know, with uh, in all the states we've played all over the country, just like Leo has. And you know, you go anywhere if you look at De La Salle or Modern Day or Bosco or Don Bosco or. Uh, all these places that we've been over around in, you know, and I know that De La Salle has been just like us. We played and I'm sure they have too, over 20 times on ESPN. Is that public for, that's publicity for your high school. So if you have the greatest uh, Cespians or the debate, the country doesn't see that. The athletic wow. program is helping and carrying this high school. And if the administrators don't figure that out, then guess what happens? Coaches leave, enrollment goes, and it happens. It's not BS, it's not a fact check, it's not like uh, going to recall, uh, recall uh, the election votes. It, it's fact. So, and you guys know that. So, yeah, yeah, Coach, that's gr great point. And I think that uh, I think we all can take something from that. That um, you know, we we understand the leadership role that athletics can play, right? And that that we are in the spotlight and. And uh, there's a, a tremendous amount of responsibility that comes with that as well. So uh, last couple of questions, Coach, as we look to wrap up, um, you know, there's uh, uh, many people here today that, you know, learn, I'm sure, by just having conversations with people and their experiences that they've had. And uh, typically a question we hear asked is, if it, what's, the, what's the one thing that you've learned that, if, you know, I came into your office and said, hey, George, I want to become an athletic director at a Catholic high school. Where would you start? What would you tell me is the one thing that I've got to focus on first? Or what would you tell these people here listening today? What's the number one thing they need to focus on first when starting a, an athletic department? Tone, I would say get right across the street at Big Daddy's. It's a bar and have four or five beers and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying everybody's crazy for being on this call right now and doing what we do. No, but this, this, <laughs> you guys got to understand now, okay? If you can't lo love and laugh and get no to people, 
I just remember one of the best things I ever, ever, ever did. I would used to go, I, in, in 1975, there was no internet or anything like that. So I made a uh, press guide in high school. A little picture of a guy said this, said that. Sent out 600 of them. And I got uh, 400 and some back. So that became my ma mailing list. So then I went to all the National uh, American Football Coaches Association meetings. Okay. And I remember in 1977, we're in uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, San Francisco. So, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm just trying to be, yes, Leo, I'm a little different cat, but uh, he knows and his buddy, uh, one of the assistant coaches, these guys, if you guys have not played against Leo out there, do it because it is the deal but anyway so we're in the lobby <clears throat> so i just wanted to be a big shot so i went up to the concierge and this were all the, the lobbies back in those things uh it, it was all bare you know people around hanging out and then when grant grant tap took it over from charlie mack uh, everything, the craziness slopped down. Now it's better like it was. But anyway, so I went to concierge and I got the guy and said, listen, I'm going to give you $20. I want you to just go this whole lobby for about 10 minutes. And I want you to say, Coach Schumbuckler from Michigan, please call George Smith from St. Thomas uh, in, in Fort Lauderdale, he has a great player for you. And it's going around. Bo wasn't even there. But people look at them, some of the people know, you know Bo? I said, yeah. Is he, did he call you? No, but he will, which was bullshit, but part of my life. <laughs> but that's had you to do to sell yourself, you know? And we don't have to do that anymore. We have the internet. That's either good or bad. And I, I, I know that anybody that's on this call, if it's football coaches or basketball play, players, they want to help your players. Move them. Watch what's, uh, 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 you know, uh, the uh, guys that are uh, going to promote them, where they have to pay for them, that, that's, that, that, that's wrong. So we can do that ourselves. So anyway. Yeah, the, uh, the matriculation through the system, right? But hopefully their, their last uh, athletic event isn't played at the school and providing opportunity for them to move on after the fact. That's, uh, that's great stuff. I think, Leo, do we get time for one more? Or do we want to open it up to questions? Get time for one more? Okay. All right, Coach. Final question for you. Um, uh, we were talking about uh, leadership, and we'll circle back to that right now. Is there uh, a, a recommendation that you have right now, having led through, let's call it the last, you know, eight, nine months worth of this pandemic? Is there something that you've chosen to do from a leadership standpoint that maybe is uh, something you've learned or you've chosen to do differently that you could share with the rest of the athletic directors on the call today? Well, I know that wherever we're at, in what state or whatever, we all have uh, protocols. I mean, it could be over uh, in Alabama, it could be in Jersey, it could be in whatever. So the one thing that we did in Florida, we had a check-in part, because I told you guys, we're in the uh, hybrid, a lot of the guys, would not get there until 3.30 or whatever. And uh, we had an entry, because right now we have JV football, we had volleyball, JV volleyball going on, soccer, soccer just starting up, cross country, swimming. All those entry proms were different, okay? So the JV and the football guys would not mask in 
for three hours. They would have to go around the building. Uh, the soccer guys would go through a different gate. And I think that really helped us. Now, we had problems in JV girls soccer from Hollywood parties and Halloween, I'm sorry. And uh, the same with cross country. And it almost wiped us out. It cost us in the girls cross country at least the second or third uh, deal in the state championship. So, you know, we did the best we can and your guys are doing the same thing you can do. Awesome. Well, Coach Smith, we really appreciate you coming on. Uh, Leah, I guess we'll turn it back over to you and open it up to the questions that people have. I know some people were typing questions as we were going there, so. Coach, do you, uh... Well, first of all, I'll just open up to everybody. Thanks again. Are there any questions for Coach Smith here um, from anybody? All right, Coach no. Smith, my question is. No, hey, Leo, yeah. I'm very upset. Sure. There's not <laughs> one guy ask me a question where Big <laughs> Bar is in Fort Lauderdale. My, my, my. Well, I, I, I didn't ask you because I know where it is. So <laughs> no, but, we went. Big, no, no, that's true. We went to Big Netos. Okay. Correct. So, my my final question. I think a lot of people want to hear what what has kept you motivated. Is there a couple of things that's kept you motivated to be there for that many years since nineteen seventy whatever at St. Thomas? Well, no, Leo. I'll be honest with you. Being honest, totally. This is not a kiss butt or whatever guys like yourself and all these guys right now because anybody that's listening to that okay in this deal they are great guys and those are the guys you want to be able to talk to just so you guys know I, I Sean's been in my office uh, Leo we played him at our place and played him out and last year when we played De La Salle out there, you can't go anywhere where these people will treat you better. And it's just like we hope we did with him in 2012. So this is what we're supposed to be doing. This is about us. In any of these guys in this association, we have to help public or private schools and help our profession and be love the kids. And the other thing, take your football players or anybody and say, just like in California, you're getting started, wear a mask so you can wear a helmet. I love you guys. <laughs>